Somebody knows who you are. Uh, thank you all. Is this working? Okay. Thank you all for being here. Uh, I'm going to let my, um, I'm Larry Harris from Pumatic. I'm going to let my distinguished panelists, all of whom are to tell you how they have um, gotten fabulously wealthy monetizing mobile uh, in their current gigs, uh, introduce themselves, and then we're going to dive right in. So we'll go backwards. Uh, so I'm Saul and Mash uh, from Time Inc. Ned Newhouse, Connie Nast. And I'm John Nigerian from E. Hey, you guys have to lean in. I know there's a mic won't bite Brian, Brian Doyle at e ESPN. John Nigerian, E. Ned Newhouse, Connie Nast. <laughs> Saul and Mash, Time Inc. Now we'll do the wave. <laughs> <laughs> Perfect. Um, we uh, sent out for a, a couple of questions, which we got in from Twitter, so we're going to dive right in with those. Um, gentlemen, the, one of the number one things people want to know is what's actually working. How are you? How are you making your? How are you making your your bona fides in mobile? Um, you got great brands, uh, great audience who are passionate. Um, what what is driving results with agencies and uh, particularly for brands in your publications? It's a good time of year to be at ESPN with all the sports coming together. Whether, whether it's a Ryder Cup college football, the NFL, NBA around the corner, college basketball as well. Um, so we, we try to keep it as simple as possible. Uh, mobile's not easy by nature. And uh, we're leading with research. We're, we're kind of looking at where the fans are gravitating to. I'm sure you guys have read the trades. We're on a given weekend, our mobile traffic is equal, if not greater, than what we're seeing in digital. We don't uh, believe it's a zero-sum game. Uh, we're up year over year 10% digitally. Our TV ratings are up, so it's not a matter of mobile taking from our digital and or television platforms. It's more of an additive. Um, and we're trying to talk less of mobile being mobile and more of it just being a fan consuming content. So we're getting beyond apps versus web versus desktop versus tablet and just uh, really leading with the audience. Yeah, and, and we at E are, you know, we're obviously building our mobile presence as much as possible. Uh, knowing that the audience really wants to consume a lot of our content there. And we obviously need to continue to figure out how to monetize that traffic. I think like everybody, we're all encountering, uh, you know, versus the internet, certainly more dollars flowing to the internet on a per user basis. But um, the good news is I think that that is starting to change. It's starting to turn, I think, especially for brand advertisers that offer a multi-screen experience as well. Um, you know, we, we do offer contextual integrations. We're trying to do more of that uh, across the three screens plus social. And uh, for us, you know, targeting, whether it's Fashion Police or E-Online or The Soup or, or Chelsea Lately, whatever it is, we create those experiences knowing we've got an audience. So focusing on the audience, not just raw impressions and trying to make it as contextual as possible for the advertiser. For us, it's doing a lot of things well at the same time. It's uh, educating your sales staff so they understand how mobile is different, making sure we deploy different technologies, whether it's Ad Marvel, which makes it easier to accept any rich media campaign from a multitude of ad creation companies. Um, it's deploying the right execution. So for Teen Vogue, it was responsive or adaptive design. For Wired, it was another platform called Mobify.js. And it's also um, understanding about how to lay out and design and what content goes where, which resonates for 20 different publications. So we've got many executions that we're playing in and we'll identify winners for each brand. Uh, and for Tom Inc., I think you know, we, we've tried to concentrate on uh, a few of our strengths, one of them being that uh, we have a very uh, sizable uh, scale to our audience uh, when you combine all of our different publications together. Um, in combination, we're, doing, uh, we're delivering about uh, 17 and a half million uniques uh, on mobile per month. Uh, so what we found is that there's a lot of advertisers in the marketplace who uh, they want to reach an audience uh, against premium platforms uh, with content adjacencies against premium content. Um, the issue is being able to find uh, the scale uh, all in a single place. And so we've been able to uh, uh, figure out uh, how to segment our audiences uh, across our different publications uh, in ways to help those advertisers out. Uh, we're also seeing uh, a lot of our uh, advertisers interested in uh, rich media. And with that, you know, comes uh, having some type of content experience that lives uh, inside the rich media. Um, 
we, uh, we're very good at, at developing content. Uh, that's our specialty as a publisher. Um, so we're trying to leverage those capabilities uh, on behalf of advertisers uh, to uh, partner with them to uh, create content as well. Very cool. Um, as you're rolling out that, do you find you're kind of developing also a different strategy for tablets versus regular mobile devices? I'll, I'll start with you. Um, so I would say, you know, the, the strategy as far as, uh, you know, how to reach the user on a tablet uh, versus a mobile phone, um, you know, is, is not much different from a content standpoint. Um, you know, and in in a certain extent, a user experience standpoint. I think you know when you do things uh, with an ad experience uh, or marketing experience that revolve around some of the capabilities of the device, um, like motion sensitivity, touch sensitivity, um, you know, uh, location uh, location tracking. Those things exist both uh, in mobile and both on tablet. Uh, but when it comes to uh, the actual product design and user experience in terms of how a user actually interacts with that mobile site versus tablet site. Uh, or uh, you know, application versus tablet application. Um, you know, I, I think it's important to develop specifically uh, for the platform to make sure that the user experience is optimized for that particular device. John. Uh, yeah, I mean, tablet and between the difference between tablet and mobile. Uh, on the tablet side, I think there's great opportunity for the co-viewing experience. Obviously, as a television network, uh, and that's where we're putting a lot of effort right now and energy. We have e online available through the web. And we've optimized that with our new liquid display format um, so that it's optimized for tablets and, and we have an, a unique offering for mobile as well. But on the tablet side, I think, you know, the, it's, there's a lot of co-viewing going on, whether people are using it to watch television shows and companions with the television shows or they're doing other things. It's up to us to try to en encourage them to participate with the show and be part of the show, especially if we're, if we're trying to encourage live viewing. Uh, we recently launched last week, I don't know if you've heard about it or anyone's heard of this, uh, Z-Box launched in the market to pretty good fanfare. It's a featured app uh, on iTunes right now, but uh, it's a kind of an um, unprecedented partnership between distributors and, and, and programmers. So NBCU and Comcast are equity investors. And for us, it's a, we think, bringing together discovery, social interaction, interactivity, information, and commerce, and also the advertiser message that maybe uh, is synchronized with what's going on in television. So creating all that in one, in one shop, putting 150 plus networks are available through it, uh, all, the program, all, the, all the distributors are available through it so you can navigate your screen uh, in terms of uh, deciding what to watch and see what your friends are watching and what the talent from those shows are watching. So from an iPad, uh, tablet experience, we think that type of environment is really rich uh, in an untapped area, really, uh, there's been a lot of small niche players in the space, but we think this is an opportunity to have an aggregated experience around I your entire I mean, just one, uh, Zeebok, I mean, I remember when I started in mobile, that would have been a rights nightmare. I mean, did you, I mean, was it easy to pull that consortium together or easier than it would have been in the past? Or? Well, it's not, you're not watching shows on the, on Zeebox, you're watching it on your television, or you're watching it on the internet or through like TV Everywhere service. Uh, but you're participating with this device. So if you want extra information about the show, you participate in polls on it. You're at the same time on a window, you'll have your social, your friends on there, whether it's Twitter or Facebook. And then these uh, Z tags, which synchronize with what's going on using the closed captioning in the uh, television stream to figure out what to put in there, plus things that you can actually program in. So if you have an advertiser, for instance, that's, that's buying ads online, or I'm sorry, on air, you can synchronize that experience with what's going on in Zbox. Well, it just pays off. I mean, mobile clearly pays off um, obsessions. I mean, we have fans who have to have the information. I know I was uh, watching on my phone as the U.S. died right. in the Ryder Cup, uh, hole yeah, by uh, hole yesterday, and, and then my horrible. Jets died, and my giant, <laughs> the worst mobile phone day in history. And, yeah, uh, yeah. and anyway, um, but nobody obviously uh, capitalizes more on fans and on that type of passion than ESPN, Brian, so, I mean... Yeah, are you guys willing to pay more if we can sync the ads? I, you know, we by default, I mean, I didn't hear a yes, so we're, we're, we're trying to uh, get our arms around it. I'm definitely jealous and envious of, of the Zbox partnership with the NBC Comcast folks because I, I like the innovation there. But I'll tell you, by default on an, on an NFL Sunday, you know, if we pulled the room, you probably would assume that ESPN actually carries a live event. But the, the reality of it is it's NBC, CBS, and Fox. We do a hell of a job talking about the game before it kicks off, and then we do a great job talking about the game while it's happening. We do a better job when the game's over, so you go see those highlights 
recaps, what have you. But by default, our mobile and our digital properties are the home for that sports fan. The same uh, happens in March, uh, around March Madness, where we're serving that college basketball fan starting in October, November, December, January, February. Turner takes over the rights in March for the TV broadcast, yet that fan behavior stays the same. So we had a, uh, you know, an aha moment last Sunday. At any given minute, there was over a million people connected to an ESPN digital property. 52% were on a tablet or handset. So, you know, I've into now, I've shazammed, I've get, get glued, and I haven't seen much scale there just yet. Well, well a, mil a million people at any given minute, I would assume that's scale. So one thing that we're trying to encourage our partners to do is whether you're buying us on air or not, hopefully you are, run some companion-like ads in mobile or, or tablet or PC that give that user or fan more utility. So Home Depot is out talking about the great stuff happening at Home Depot on television. It's a one-way message. We'll put a Home Depot message where the fans are gravitating to on a Saturday and then offer them utility. Where can I find a Home Depot? Can I, can I like Home Depot? Can I share Home Depot? Can I watch a video? Same goes with any vertical, studios, automotives, you name it. So you're just working harder, making the sponsorships go farther. I mean, it's really the power of sponsorship. That yeah, doing. I mean, we're, we're lucky, you know, that we have the first screen, the television screen, and such a, you know, we've been doing that since 70, 79. We've been doing a pretty good job with it. So um, we're just trying to encourage our partners to not deny this growing, you know, this growing shift in behavior. Um, and again, it's additive. It's not, it's not, we're not trying to displace what you're doing on television or displace what you're doing on desktop. We're simply trying to encourage you to offer what this platform provides, more utility. As my friend down here mentioned, it's very local, it's very social by nature, so ways to fuel engagement um, and just extend from what you're already doing elsewhere. Fantastic. Um, Ned, you have you know, um, incredibly um, you know, um, high-end brands, uh, Vanity Fair, Vogue, um, does this mean that you're getting $90 CPMs? I just, no. <laughs> but I mean, I, I, obviously, Wonderful brands love to be with wonderful brands. Are, are you finding that the high-end brands are, are adapting pretty rapidly to mobile? Um, for us, we have, uh, you know, tremendous uh, targeted relationships with people. So yes, with Vogue, they love fashion. So the fashion designers clearly want to wind up in mobile. They know it's a place that people are going to. Wired has done extremely well um, with that brand because they're on the technology bleeding edge. For us, our tablet strategy is both, um, it's kind of three-prong. It's a, uh, uh, the Adobe platform doing digital editions, which take our magazines and then add interactive elements, video, social, um, uh, uh, photo, photo sh uh, shoots that are, aren't necessarily part of the magazine. And then we deploy <coughs> on things like the Nook, um, p regular PDF versions on there as well, because we want to be brand everywhere. Um, and then on the smartphone, those are extension mobified versions of our existing <coughs> websites, which add also add utility. But for us, it's still about, I mean, print is still, isn't dead, by the way. Um, print. Uh, Print still dominates our business. This is a no, mobile for us is a brand everywhere execution. And for us, I may not have uh, TV envy for much longer. We hired uh, Don Ostrov, who is the former uh, president of CW Network. So maybe you'll see uh, GQ TV or Vogue TV, and we'll leverage those brands towards another screen. So for us, it's about brand everywhere and deploying strategies and executions to build the relationships we have, and extend them with the consumer. Very cool. Um, Saul, so I'm going to put you on the spot. Um, you have made the move from Viacom to uh, Time Inc. And I'm just curious, um, you know, your, in your perceptions, is, is the selling changed, or the scale changed, or, you know, in your short time there, what really, what do you see that's different, um, without saying anything negative, anyway? <laughs> Um, so, you know, I would say that the, uh, the, you know, there's definitely a difference moving into, uh, you know, the print side of the fence from, uh, from the television side of the fence. Uh, with TV, there's a lot of, uh, I mean, it depends on, on what your TV content is, uh, but in general, there's a lot of uh, restrictions in terms of uh, what kind of content you can put onto mobile devices, uh, you know, via full episodes, uh, music videos, uh, lots of stuff has content rights uh, that, and, and clearances that go along with it. Um, and I think in the print space, uh, you, you know, you have 
a lot of content that really lends itself uh, very well to mobile, um, where you have uh, uh, you know, pretty much the majority of content that people are consuming uh, in magazine, online, uh, is easily transfer, uh, transferable uh, to, to the mobile and tablet platforms. Um, so, uh, you know, I, I've seen uh, just, you know, my, my three and a half months now at Time Inc., uh, there is a tremendous amount of, uh, of mobile traffic, a tremendous amount of tablet traffic, um, and the, the audiences are just growing larger and larger. Um, our mobile traffic uh, is up 30%. Uh, year over year, our tablet traffic is growing at an even faster pace, um, so the audiences are, are, are just scaling up. Um, you know, I think uh, what is really nice about the, uh, you know, the, the print publication space uh, and transferring that into a mobile environment is that um, you know, as you have content that is, you know, is perfect for the mobile device and for tablets, um, then you can, you can make it travel and you can make it scale faster. Um, you know, what we've seen from the market is that uh, you have advertisers who come in who want to do uh, specific content uh, adjacencies uh, and want to be associated with particular pieces of content. Um, when you start breaking down your audience uh, and say, okay, you know, I, uh, as an advertiser, I only want to be associated not just with all people or all of Entertainment Weekly's content, but specifically uh, Grammy-based content. Or uh, I want to do a program with my recipes, but I only want... Uh, recipes around, uh, you know, ch uh, chicken with buffalo sauce. All right, so when you start breaking that down, uh, you get smaller audiences, and um, the ability to be able to take that content and uh, scale it, um, I think, is, is something that lends itself really well to, uh, to our publications. Um, we just launched a, a product called Amplify uh, that uh, essentially allows us to take our content, and we're now putting it onto uh, third-party applications uh, and third-party sites. Uh, allowing us to tap into an audience of over 200 million people and allowing our content to travel along with those advertising messages uh, you know, ac across uh, various different segments and different content categories. Um, so I think you know, just being able to have that content uh, that's easily transferable to mobile and be able to make it scale has been extremely helpful to us. Very cool. Can I ask on that, um, on Amplify, do you have advertising space on there or is it just a syndication? Uh, no, no, no. It's all, it's all about uh, uh, ad space. Uh, so essentially what we do is we take our, uh, our content, uh, we take the advertiser's message, and we put both of those things into the ad unit, and then the ad unit scales uh, across third-party apps and third-party sites. Cool. Um, just quickly, because I know we're um, running on some time here. Uh, one thing I wanted to ask, are, are your organizations finding, are you going to market against sort of the merging of digital and mobile spend, or your sales force is sort of, you still have a digital, and you have some mobile evangelists out there. Can you just talk how you're organized to, to work with agencies? I'll start with Brian and work down. Yeah, we've been uh, selling multimedia for some time. John Skipper kind of put the stick in the sand, I think back in 2000, and said, we're not selling TV, and we're not selling you know digital, or we're not selling print, we're selling it all together. So um, the apple doesn't fall far from the tree. Our mobile business has been a nice um, beneficiary to the success of our multimedia sales organization. So we actually do not have quote unquote mobile sales people. Um, when we go to agencies and or brands, we take a unified approach. So typically there will be a television executive in the room, a digital executive, a print executive, an audio executive, and take more of a collaborative approach, listen to what your, your needs are, what your goals are, and then based on research, we'll come back with a recommendation. Yeah, we're doing a combination of things, uh, which we've been doing for quite a while. We have a, a TV 360 experience, very similar to what ESPN's doing, that focuses on television, obviously is the big driver behind it, online and mobile. And then we have a digital team in, in, uh, in New York, LA, Chicago, that focuses on, on, on online and digital, I should say, with mobile included. Um, and then we also um, work with the company Rhythm New Media, I know is here, um, but we work with them because they only work with premium publishers and we use them as a premium publisher network um, to help bring additional scale uh, when we might not have campaigns running. So they've been a, a great partner as well. So looking at a three-prong approach. Our sales is all multimedia. They can sell print, they can sell app, they can sell uh, uh, the tablet special editions, but we also have our Connie Nast Studio that helps with some innovative ideas because ideas, especially in mobile, are what drive innovation. Um, I'll go on a sales call to help people understand the technology role, how we can better play with them, and then we've just hired a mobile specialist that can help enhance it. So um, 
and then we have our corporate staff that sells, you know, million dollar deals and above. So we work collaboratively together to bring all screens together in one and hope, you know, salespeople ask the right questions and we pose the right solutions based on their needs. Um, from our standpoint, it's, you know, it's pretty similar across the board. I mean, we, uh, we actually call most of our, our sellers integrated sellers, meaning that they're out in market selling uh, not just print, not just online, uh, or not just mobile. They're selling everything. Um, and it's really about what makes the most sense for a client uh, and how can we combine our platforms together uh, to create the most impactful uh, experience with that advertising or marketing campaign. Um, so, you know, my role uh, has been coming to the company and empower salespeople uh, to have a mobile expert, to have someone going out to market and, uh, you know, help talking about mobile and strategizing uh, as we, you know, create these marketing programs for clients. Um, but, you know, I, I think it's definitely important to make sure that, uh, you know, when you have a, 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 uh, an organization that sells multiple different platforms, uh, that you empower those sellers to be able to represent each of those, pl those platforms as they go out to market. Um, when we look at, uh, you know, the, the marketplace, I mean, most of the agencies that, that we work with, um, there's a handful that are doing mobile specific, uh, you know, have mobile specific budgets, um, but for the most part, uh, mobile is still being peeled out of digital budgets, um, or it's, you know, a, it's part of a digital strategy uh, that encompasses the digital agency also representing, uh, you know, mobile buying in, uh, along with the online buying. Um, and so you want to be able to have one single point of contact uh, to that agency rep or to that client uh, to be able to say, hey, you know, you can, you can work with us as an organization, but you can, only, you can call out to one person uh, to be able to uh, figure out what's the best strategy for you and how to take advantage of each platform that we have. Very cool. Um, one thing I've been blown away by um, is really uh, always the power of research to kind of sway um, brands and media folks towards towards the new medium. I, um, you know, ESPN has a long history, fantastic research team. Uh, I, I was sent a question, which is, um, does ESPN charge for all that research? Uh, for, we, we do a lot of pro bono research. I think it's for the greater good of the industry to go out and um, more or less be able to educate why you want to add this fourth or fifth screen to your media mix. You know, being the um, digital guy at ESPN that kind of oversees our strategy monetization efforts, I'm thrilled about the research and the learnings that we've found. Uh, a couple data points that come that stem from our World Cup XP and the most recent college football um, XP, which stands for cross-platform. Uh, research showed that, you know, the best uh, media mix uh, to drive purchase intent was a combination of TV and mobile. And then the number one driver of word of mouth was uh, television and mobile. So there's a lot of other reasons why print, if, if you're trying to generate this ad effectiveness metric or why this media mix over here. Um, and there, we also do, uh, we all, we're, we're asked several times and frequently to do other types of research. Um, and we'll look at that on a case by case basis. Um, the other thing that I've been amazed by this whole um, dual screen movement, particularly the power of live, um, whether it's uh, red carpet, uh, Grammys, um, Super Bowl, it's amazing um, to see this kind of dual traffic revolution taking place. A lot of startups trying to make that happen, get glue, et cetera, but it, it seems you guys are already on top of that. John, you're, you have, can you talk a little bit about some of your successful programs? Yeah, I mean, we have uh, live from red carpet apps. We have launched those for now. We've had them out in the market for two years. So we certainly see and we've seen, you know, usage go up during the actual red carpet show. Um, versus, you know, typically the usage on our, on our website is actually higher after the day after the show. And we actually see day of and then actually during that two-hour win, two window actually the, the, the largest increase. Um, you know, we do companion live streams. We do that on our mobile phones and we do it on the tablet as well that um, go and accompany maybe during the commercial breaks. We actually just did that for the, the Emmys. So we have a hosted really fun interactive thing going on uh, during the breaks. But they include the advertisers and the messaging that all comes with it, which is really cool, too. So, yeah. Does that work on Vanity Fair? You get gossip going? Uh, well, we have a wonderful little Oscar party that we provide uh, every year to the uh, Oscar winners and, and attendees. So that dri we have a companion app for that as well, and it drives plenty of traffic. Also, style.com goes and tends all these fashion shows and collections. So either they're doing some live events well, there's literally millions of pictures of every single person that walked down the runway with a garment. So for us, we become a trade vehicle, the industry collective on content, as well as Wired has events as well they participate in. So um, 
events are important to us and we'll continue to drive more audience. And Brian, I mean, that you're, you guys are like the experts in fans. Yeah, I tell you, uh, you know, to John's point, live events and, and mobile or, or connected devices go incredibly well together. Uh, our traffic quadruples when there's something going on, whether it's a football game, a soccer game, a baseball game. It's, it's the fan behavior, and they're going to want to get that score or watch that highlight or that news. One thing we just rolled out this past college football season, since we own about 85% of the rights to broadcast on air that extend to the digital properties, is if you come into one of our touch points and you let us know you're a Notre Dame fan or a Syracuse fan or a what have you, an Iowa State fan, within seven seconds of something happening for that, for that team in a given moment, uh, whether it's a pick six, uh, you know, a sack fumble, what have you, we're gonna send it out to you in real time. Literally within seven seconds, we're cutting the video highlight. Uh, so if you're on desktop, PC, tablet, handsets, we're letting you know something's happening with your team, which we're pretty proud about. We haven't figured out how to monetize it just yet because we don't wanna slow down the experience to that fan, uh, but we'll, we'll, we'll figure one out soon enough. You mean you're not just going to stick a logo in the front? <laughs> <laughs> Maybe. Uh, again, we don't want to slow it down. So uh, stitching a pre-roll or even a post-roll would, it would it yeah, slow stuff down. That's fantastic. Yeah. Uh, people, anybody coming in there for gossip or no? Oh, absolutely. Uh, it's uh, <clears throat> one of our biggest sites. And um, the, you know, when, when a big event happens, whether it be you know, the Grammys, the Oscars, uh, you know, as Brian alluded to earlier, uh, it's not necessarily you have to have uh, you know, programming, uh, television programming owned within your own house, so you can be reporting on something and still capitalize uh, off of that traffic if, if you're seen as uh, a credible source uh, to be able to report on that content. And what we've seen with people, uh, Entertainment Weekly, In Style, and a number of other publications, uh, is that when these events happen, uh, our mobile traffic uh, spikes up like crazy. Um, so uh, people has actually taken uh, recent steps uh, to hire a uh, mobile editor uh, specifically to concentrate uh, on programming uh, for the mobile platform uh, as these events take place and beyond. Um, when we actually broken down our, our mobile traffic to look at, uh, well, at really all, all, of our, all of our traffic across all of our platforms to see what the user behavior is and how, uh, and how the user comes into our sites and when, um, we found that our mobile traffic is fairly consistent uh, throughout the entire day with users coming back uh, multiple times per day in small increments of what we call found time. Uh, so the idea that you know you have two minutes or you have five minutes when you're at the bus stop or in line to doctor's office and you know you're checking your device, um, and then you know tablets, uh, you get more of the free time usage where someone's uh, you know hitting that uh, that user session for you know 20 or 30 minutes as they come back home at the end of the day, the traffic spikes up, uh, and as they sit as they're sitting in front of their TV, uh, we see that traffic uh, you know really. Uh, you know, really um, skyrocket. Um, so uh, what we're trying to do is program for each device in the, in the way that the user behaves on that device. Um, you know, we want to make sure that there's, uh, there's updates, you know, constantly uh, throughout the day on mobile uh, as uh, a user may be gearing up uh, for a particular event or they want to find the highlights of it the day after. Uh, and with tablet, we want to make sure that, uh, you know, the user has uh, a full you know, companion experience as they're watching those events on television uh, so that uh, they look at us as their, their primary sites to go to for that companion experience. Awesome. So, you know, video's up, traffic's up, we're targeting better. Um, is it all peaches and cream, John? Or is it yeah, I think we're getting there. I think, you know, we're starting to see s scale from the brands, which is important. Um, I think, you know, we were talking about this earlier. I think it's the early days. You can look back to the early days of the internet. It was doom and gloom when this thing, when the bottom fell out of the internet and it was six billion dollars at that time in revenue and you know you look back at it now and you think wow where have we come from right it was back in the day you're selling ninety dollars cpms for for silly little logos placements so obviously it's going to evolve we're pretty excited about it i think everybody up here seems to be doing a lot of things around innovation around this platform looking at it from an editorial perspective looking at how do we contextually integrate the brands and find new ways to do it and rich media and video is a big part of that and, you know, there's, it started off with there's a glut of inventory. And it, you start that way and you don't really have a, a, the demand for it. It's going to drive down pricing. And that's where we started. And so hopefully we're building up from there. Ned? Um, for me, I'm very bullish about mobile because I was a founder of 24-7 Media when all we ran were GIF ads. But this supercomputer <clears> device <throat> is 2,000 times more powerful than the computer we put up on Apollo 11. Um, there will be more smartphones in the world than will have running water. This is a personal device. It's my device. We don't leave the house without it. So the opportunity for us 
as editorial folk and you as advertisers to immerse yourself with people and get them engaged in your brands is what the definition of marketing when I went to college 100 years ago was all about. And I think that rich media that gives people the opportunity to choose their brand experience is what people remember and what drives what we all care about, the purchase funnel. So I'm super excited about this medium. And personally, I'll, I'll say this, I'll get on my soapbox. This is not a DR medium. This is about engagement. It's a big word. It's the best medium there is for getting people immersed and get to know your brand. So run rich media, do your tests, do a brand evaluation study. It's going to work. Preach, Ned. Preach. Damn. Bro. Bring it on. <laughs> Hallelujah. <laughs> Brian, you got anything to add? He covered it. <laughs> 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 it's for, I, I, I hope so Hearst does well. That? That's, that's beautiful. That? Yep. That's beautiful. I'm beautiful. Man, preaching like a black man. You know. <laughs> All right. Um, any questions? <laughs> questions from the audience. All right. Hang on. Right. A little mic here. All right. Comes up where you at. Uh, Henry Blaufox, Dragon Search. Uh, one of the things that Ned mentioned uh, use of social uh, hmm. as part of this. I know you, you, that uh, Conley Nast and Time, at least, have got. Uh, pretty large and well-integrated custom uh, solution, custom content groups. Mm -hmm. uh, do they get involved in social and trying to manage engagement and track and you know, run conversations and moderate them, or is your social involvement more geared to just uh, putting the buttons out there and giving access to the standard uh, platforms? It's a good. Com uh, it's good qu I think it depends by brand. Um, we do have a social media experts that advises each brand on how to do so. Um, certain brands do well than others, um, but uh, they all do have deployment strategies for Facebook and Twitter that are very different. Um, so I think, look, I think social is another part of the hook that you do well, but at the end of the day, I want social to build relationships with our consumers. So it's just another means to an end, but it's part of the strategy that we deploy. And, you know, from a question over here. Oh. Right. Yeah, an answer? Oh. Go oh. ahead. No. Oh. 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 Over here. It's all right. Over here? Uh, so, you know, from, from our standpoint, um, you know, I would say we look at it very similar net. Every, every uh, brand uh, at Time Inc. handles social a bit differently. Um, you know, we, I, I think we kind of break it down to two categories, right? There's, uh, you know, social from the standpoint of communicating with our audience and our users, uh, making sure that uh, they're able to share the content that we create, uh, to talk about it in a community setting, um, and to make sure that, you know, we're using social in a way uh, to generate more awareness for, for our content overall. Uh, but then, you know, on the flip side, we also have uh, the advertising piece where we've got, uh, you know, advertisers, brands, marketers who are reaching out to us and saying, you know, we, uh, we have a social presence. The hard part, uh, you know, for, for brands out there is being able to constantly put out engaging content, uh, you know, on social platforms for those users. So we're starting to work with a number of brands uh, to actually create content uh, for their Facebook pages, to create content, uh, you know, for, for their Twitter streams. Um, you know, basically working with them as a content arm and say, hey, we know how to do content really well. Uh, we'll empower it for you, not just to, for you guys to reach our audiences, but also for a way uh, for you guys to engage the existing social fans that you have too. One, one quick plug here as well. It's, it's a huge word. It's, it's a bomb that was dropped, the word social and mobile. They go incredibly well together. Two things that we've done last week we, we've released. Well, when you think of social, what is it? It's some sort of content digestion uh, in, a, in a new way. Twitter and Facebook have done a hell of a job, you know, giving you what you want in a feed-like manner. So if you go to ESPN.com, to the right-hand side of the headlines, there's something called Sports Center, the feed. It's in beta. We'd love to get your feedback. Um, Samsung was a launch partner, and it works across any browser, whether it's tablet, PC, or um, uh, handsets. The second thing is, is everyone's asking for social, and we're doing, I think, a pretty darn good job of, of bring, bringing some social innovation to the table. But we'd rather not come up with something off the shelf and sell it to this beverage company or this automotive company. So a lot of it comes down to collaboration, sitting with the clients, the agencies. Uh, recently, we did something with Mazda and hashtag SC Top 10, which is you know a big thing that's been happening for some time now on SportsCenter, the top 10 highlights of the day. And it's user-generated play where we're empowering fans who may be watching some game that we, we don't have coverage of, and they're hashtagging it in, and, and it's been a tremendous success. So that's just an example uh, of something that we whiteboarded with the client and the agency, and, and we were able to pull it off. Yeah, 
Jeff, I mean, increasingly you're going to see these passions, you know, transcend just just you, right? So that's that that's uh, that kind of consortium building is going to happen in mobile very quickly. But it's it's very important to to ultimately the consumer satisfaction. It's great that people are doing that. Um, you guys kind of just brought up what I was going to ask about, and that is when I uh, interact with all the content that you guys create, um, I'm always interested in seeing uh, other users' and readers' comments. And so I was just curious how involved um, do you guys use that uh, to facilitate your audience? Uh, so uh, with People's Relaunch, uh, People uh, mobile site that we relaunched uh, just a, a couple months ago, uh, we actually added uh, user commenting and social sharing into every single page uh, of the site. Uh, so now, uh, a, you know, user can not only see uh, you know what uh, what the rest of the community uh, is talking about as they're on that particular piece of content, uh, but they can share it out as well or post a specific comment about it. Yeah, likewise, we launched Section 140 in 2009. It's an, the ability for fans to banter back and forth. It's only skyrocketing, and with a lot of our new touch points, whether it's a college football app, we're pulling in tweets, trying to make it personalized to what you're look, interested in, your teams, your your athletes, what have you. Um, Great to see on soccer, you get whole countries like duking it out on oh, your, yeah. <laughs> your comment. And they duke it out over celebrity news and information too, by the way. So we're, we're obviously spending a lot of time on that. Okay, any more questions? They do. All so right, that's it. Thank you very much, gentlemen. Thank you. Thank you. Thank you. Thank you. Thank you.